light for you in dark places when all other lights go out. Hello, SPG community. This is DCHL Devin here, bringing you another episode of A Light in the Dark. And in today's episode, we're going to go ahead and do an expansion upon a previous video. Uh, we recently talked about old profiles in The Hobbit. And uh, well, I back then called, of course, Fellowship of the Ring, Lord of the Rings, uh, Return of the King, and whatnot, so forth. Uh, essentially, I wanted to show newer players what it was like back in the day of the older game of Lord of the Rings. Now, I only focused on two profiles, but rather than break it down like that, I'm just going to throw a lot of them at you all in a single video. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and focus on Elves, and we're going to focus on Fellowship of the Ring most specifically. Now for those of you guys who didn't see the previous video, don't worry, I'm going to cover that. But before I get to that, I want to cover a disclaimer. There was one commenter on there who was absolutely correct, and I didn't mention, uh, he mentioned the fact that I didn't mention, uh, that uh, these profiles were only meant for scenarios. They were not meant to be for a strategy competitive game. That didn't come until much later. And so when you hear these profiles, you shouldn't really think in today's current meta because the today's current meta didn't exist. It was that meta back in the day. So I didn't make that really clear and a lot of people were like, oh my God, they're so powerful or whatever. And you know, and, but it, realistically, the reason I go over these profiles is because they're so interesting. They're, they're really just interesting profiles. And it's always cool to think about, oh my God, what if they existed today? So ultimately, when we discuss these, just keep that in the back of your mind. I hope not to make anyone be like, ah, oh, that's not how it was. Trust me, as a veteran of this game, I have been around since the beginning of its inception. I know exactly what it was like, and I do know that we didn't play it in pitched battles and say, 800 points, let's go. In fact, 300 points probably would have been a large game back then. So uh, let's go ahead and get straight into it, actually. I want to go ahead and cover the first profile for you guys. Here on the screen you'll see is Lord Elrond. Now, from my previous video, you guys heard me talk about this guy, but I wanted to bring up a couple things that I missed just a little bit. Uh, one person mentioned, why not compare him to the Master of Elrond, or the Champion of the Free Peoples that we see today, um, or Lord of the West, as he is referred to. That's because this Elrond, the, the Elrond you see here in this picture is the Elrond that we have in the Eregion and Rivendell source book. So those two, I mean, that's the evolution of that character. So that's the one I'm going to go ahead and compare it to. And so ultimately, um, when we look at this profile, one, we look at him, he's a lot cheaper than current editions of this profile. Uh, in fact, a ton cheaper. And actually measuring pretty much at, this, at a better ability than what they had before. Now, once again, how could you think this is balanced? The game was a bit different back then, but once again, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's see how cool this was. We're talking about Fight 9, Strength 4, Defense 7, 337. So as you can see, first starting off, this Elrond was the old Gilgalad. And uh, in fact, at a comparable price point, the new Gilgalad is pretty much kind of more on the scale here. Um, so he carries a two-handed sword, uh, which is an elven blade. Back then they didn't have elven blades, so they just called them two-handed swords, and that was kind of the end of it. And as you can also see, he does not carry his ring Vilya. So that's kind of a missed opportunity there. They didn't do anything with the rings, but he does have 3-3-3 three, three, three for might, will, and fate, so nothing really new there, but ultimately he's got the stats of Gil-Galad in the fight value department. And what you'll notice very quickly uh, later on is that Gilgalad was actually the swap. So Gilgalad had the older profile. He's a six fight value and whatnot. They swapped their profiles over time. So overall, what do I think of this profile? If he was in current meta, I'm going to do that after every profile. If he was today, I would say, holy God, <laughs> take this man. <laughs> but um, I mean... Ultimately, though, you don't see a ton of difference in him. What we could say is that ultimately, the fact that nowadays, so you got to look at a couple things. One, our new Elrond has terror. This one does not. So that's a big key factor. Um, the other thing is now they both have woodland creature. Uh, it doesn't say it in this profile, but it it does cover it in um, like another section of the rules. 
And so what you're paying so many less points for, you lose in Terra, you lose in Vilia, you lose in the Elven Blade mechanic that we get today. So before you jump at the chance to be like, oh man, I really wish we had this Elrond, just remember there's actually some clear weaknesses here. Fight 9 though is tough to ignore, and hence we can understand why. You technically got this version though with the Lord of the West, uh, since he calls Furrog strikes for days. So, uh, let's go into the next one. This one's actually my favorite, and uh, kind of went rampant on the GBHL community, and I believe the OSBGL too, uh, is Arwen Evanstar. Now, Arwen actually, in this version, has kind of like a spell that I would regard as evil. Um, so, in my previous video, I kind of went at length with it. She was kind of my main pick for the day. But ultimately, we're talking about 65 points, so a little tiny bit more expensive. Uh, she can take her horse, Asphaloth, and the horse doesn't do anything different. Uh, but you are talking about uh, six fight, three strength, three defense. Uh, two attacks rather than her current, and two wounds, six courage, uh, so her, I'm sorry, five courage. So the current version actually has an increase in courage and a decrease in attacks. Um, so, I mean, arbitrary, I guess, but I'd rather have the attacks, of course. But um, that is the current version she had. And then we get into the meat of this profile, which is Confound, a really crazy spell. Uh, basically, it's a radius of six inches, dice score to use four up, and she can use, Arwen can use this power to raise the forces of nature to send her enemies reeling. This spell affects all enemies within six inches of her, but only one affected foe can resist it. If, uh, or, I'm sorry, can attempt to resist it. If the resisted foes are affected, if the foe fails to resist them, then all are affected. All right, so basically what it's saying is what we currently know of the, uh, the rule set for that. Um, but all enemies within six inches of Arwen are driven directly away beyond the radius of effect. If unable to complete each, uh, this move, each model must move as far as possible. All models affected are thrown to the ground, suffer a strength 3 strike, and lose one point of will if they have any left. This is probably the most evil spell ever and would have made Arwen awesome uh, and broken. <laughs> so, uh, th yeah, definitely can't go back to these days. But you guys already knew about this profile. It's been circulating everywhere. It's the one I covered in my last video. So, I'm assuming you know about it. Let's go ahead and move on from her. So next we get into Halder. So of course, uh, Rivendell and all the elves were all kind of meshed into one section. In fact, they were just meshed into good. There was no evil or good or anything like that. I'm sorry, there was no um, uh, factions. Uh, it was just evil and good. So let's go into Halder. Halder has changed relatively little. He actually was very, very cheap back in the day, uh, 55 points. Uh, we're talking about a comparable set of Might, Will, and Fate, so nothing changed there. Uh, six fights, four strength, four defense, two attacks, two wounds, and a courage of five. So, so far our current Howler is a lot more expensive, and uh, he took a hit. Uh, I'm sorry, he got an increase in courage. So, next we're looking at, uh, did this old Howler does carry an Elven Blade, however, it does clarify it's a hand weapon. As I said, Elven Blades were not made as a rule back then. Uh, he can, at additional cost, carry an Elven Bow and a Cloak for 5 and 10 points. And that is the same today, with the exception of now the uh, Howler that we know of can also carry armor. So, uh, this is of course because when they first met him in the Fellowship of the Ring, he didn't have any armor, and then in Two Towers he got it, so in the next edition they gave it to him. Other than that, he still fires twice, uh, so we're talking about basically Halder at a much, much more affordable cost. I would say that if Halder was this price today, at 55 points, you would see him in more competitive lists. Uh, but until then, he's still way outshined by Legolas. Um, for just a little bit more, you get a more assured warrior. So that's probably the reason we don't see this character as much is because his price tag is a bit big. But overall, I think that he is reasonably priced by today's standards. If we look at him in comparison to captains and such, uh, yet yeah, captains, uh, Gladium captains are more expensive than this Howler that we see here. So I guess I understand why they kind of priced him more. So let's get into another one. Um, this time I want to talk about Galadriel. Uh, she is very different than what we know of. So first we'll start her off, 90 points. Um, we have Fight 6, Strength 3, Strength to, uh, 3, 1 attack, 
three wounds, seven courage. So literally the exact same stat line you're already used to. So that hasn't really changed much at all. That's the cool thing about this game. It doesn't change much. Um, but then we have Mirror of Galadriel. So at 25 points, same cost as today's standards. You're talking about Galadriel's mirror that does once each turn, uh, one good hero can restore one fate by moving into touch with Galadriel's mirror. A hero can restore two or more fate points if he touches the mirror over several turns. But only one hero can restore fate in the same turn. Galadriel herself can use the mirror if desired, but no other hero can restore fate in the same turn. A hero cannot use the mirror to gain more fate than he originally had. So, actually, we're talking about a weaker mirror. Uh, the mirror in today's standard actually says uh, mirror is deployed within six inches of Galadriel and uh, it can't move, so that's one big difference because this one doesn't say that it can't move, so she has it and she can carry it around. So I guess that's a big advantage. But ultimately, it affects anyone within six inches, and they recover their fate back to their starting value. So there's no waiting around for their fate anymore. So uh, arguably, I'd rather have the newer mirror. Uh, since still, we still have 90 points less. Uh, now, keep in mind, like I said, all hypothetical based on, hey, what if these guys were in current meta? So uh, La Florian is the next special rule she has. This is one that kind of changes her might, will, and fate. Now, as I said, this was a scenario-based game, so you were expected to play in certain little areas. You may know that Tom Bombadil actually had a rule saying he can't leave uh, the Bear Downs, so if you're not playing there, you can't play him. Obviously, they did away with that in current meta since it's kind of like leaning more toward that competitive aspect. But uh, essentially all it did was it made it so that her might, will, and fate regenerated. It uh, says, within the boundaries of the land of Lothlorien, Gladriel's powers maintain the world as it once was. Beyond her own realm, her powers are limited. If the battle is fought beyond the boundaries of Lothlorien, Gladriel has three points, each of might, will, and fate. If the battle is fought within the boundaries of Glorforian, Galadriel has no might, will, and fate, but she can use up three uh, points of each in any turn. So, very powerful ability, but would make no sense in current meta. Uh, it would just be a fluff ability, sort of like Gollum from Mordor Sourcebook, just kind of there, like, for if you need it. So, next we'll talk about uh, Terror. She's got that. Uh, of course, she has that today. Yep, yes, she does. And then uh, Magical Powers, she has Immobilize, casting on three up, and uh, same as today's standard, and then she has Command. Actually, the current Galadriel has Blinding Light added onto that. So now we're talking about a Galadriel that has the ring, Nenya, uh, so she rerolls her fate rolls. She has the mirror, which is stronger in my opinion, and has Blinding Light. In all honesty, we have an upgraded version of Galadriel. I think uh, this is a good thing. So it's not like the Arwen situation where Arwen just got way depowered. This one got way more powerful. And of course, we know our newer forms, Lady of Light, and everything like that. So let's go ahead and cover the next one. Uh, we got Kelborn. Kelborn is 65 points uh, in this older version. So nearly half the price. Is it half? Yes, it is exactly half the price. So um, you're talking about six fight, three strength, uh, three defense, one attack. Three wounds and courage five. So now you know why he's half the cost. Because he's half the stats. This guy was weak. I mean, you have terror, he has the same law for an ability, and a mobilize. Um, ultimately, you'd only pick this guy if he's fighting in law for uh, I'd totally rather have the, the caliber that we have today. He's, he's a lot more just all around better. Uh, of course, this uh, new Caliborn has a, a much more increased stat line, even might, will, and fate wise. Uh, if you look, he has 3 2 1 uh, for his uh, profile back in the day, whereas our current one is 3 3 3. So, even then, we're doing just better. So, the price increase is well deserved and definitely well thanked. Um, so, then we'll get into Gilgalad. Gilgalad, of course, has changed a lot. He, uh, well, not too much. He, he has 125 as his point value. His might, will, and fade is 331. Nothing to see there. Uh, fight value is really big shocker. Uh, he has six fight. He does not have a horse. Aglos does not uh, do plus one to wound. So those are two differences. And I think in today's version, he has a shield. So he can even get even more tough. Uh, so ultimately, you're talking, yes, he does have a shield actually. Uh, so ultimately, you're talking about uh, Gogola being a much better profile today. But we already know this. So, Elven Captains. Uh, Elven Captains will be 
probably the last one I'm going to cover today. Like I said, I'm just going to cover the elves. Uh, we don't want to long win this whole thing, but uh, elven captains are uh, pretty much the same um, as they used as they used to be. Uh, well, a little bit of reduction in points. Other than that, six fight, four strength, uh, four defense rather than our current, but that's simply because they didn't give him the armor. So the current version assumes you gave him the armor, so they're about a little bit more expensive than the current um, for that reason. Uh, so you would get there. Uh, then he just has a plethora of options. The same options he has today. Nothing to see here. He just got more expensive. Uh, so, But I mean, it's just an elven captain, so no one really cares. Because everyone plays the name characters anyway. So, but anyway, um, yeah, that's it for the Elven Factions. Tell me your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. I'll keep posting these up. I think they're actually kind of interesting about where the game used to be back in the day and where it is today. Um, and, of course, to, uh, next time I'm going to go ahead and cover the Fellowship. If you guys want to jump ahead of me, you certainly can. I have these rules posted on DCHobbyLeague.com uh, where you can absolutely see the rules. Uh, they, they're they really, really, really old, <laughs> so uh, I went ahead and put them up there. But, of course, if Games Workshop tells me to take it down, I'll take it down. Um, I just kind of figure, all right, these rules haven't been in effect for 14 years, so why not? Um, but other than that, uh, join me next time, guys, and I will cover the Fellowship of the Ring. All right, see you later.